you so much. Uh, pleasure to be here, everybody. And uh, you know, there's this saying uh, that the future is already here. It's just unevenly distributed. So that's what I'm talking about, uh, but not about the future. I'm talking about MarTech and Commerce Tech. And these have already arrived. They are just unevenly distributed. So what do I mean by this? Uh, you know, before I go there, I'll uh, talk a little bit about this initiative of ours. Uh, this is an initiative we launched four years back. And we saw that when it came to MarTech and related technologies, there was no real India-specific data available. So when we had to talk to anybody, our peers, our customers, or anybody, uh, we used to, uh, you know, get into a, a scenario of referring to some data from the US or something like that. It was always a handicap for us. So at Miram, uh, uh, we took matters into our own hands and we said that, okay, let's do this survey for India. And that's how the report was launched four years back. This time around, uh, what we've done is we've expanded the scope of the report to include not just Smartech, but also Commerce Tech. Uh, Miram and our parent company, VML and VML Commerce, they are full service digital agencies with Smartech as well as commerce capabilities. And that's why expanding the scope make, made perfect sense. So with that, I'm happy to launch the India Martech and Commerce Tech Report 2024, powered by Miram and VML. We have two great partners. We have E4M, who's a media partner with us, and Web Engage, who's the retention partner. Uh, they are obviously uh, with us today, and we'll do the inauguration of the report shortly. But what I thought was, of course, once the inauguration is done, the report will be available uh, online, and we also have some physical copies for everybody to pick up uh, at the reception. Uh, what I'll do is, before the inauguration itself, I'll run you through eight key insights that we are finding out about the report. Now, how did we arrive at these insights? So, uh, what we did is, uh, we, so uh, VML and Miram, we are a WPP group company. Uh, we worked with Kantar to actually run a survey with 250 plus marketing decision makers. And this survey, the outcome of this survey is what helped us with these insights. So, it's a very, very rigorous scientific process that we've arrived at to come at this, uh, some of these insights. We also have some brilliant insights shared by uh, marketing leaders. So the report that you'll see is, uh, you know, there's data and charts and all that good stuff uh, that can help you as a marketer or an agency person or a decision maker, you know, make up your mind. But we also have a lot of anecdotes, a lot of, uh, you know, conversations with marketing leaders to help you, um, you know, add an extra dimension to that data, right? So we have insights from all of these marketing leaders uh, that you see here. And we have respondents across several different industries. And that really gives everybody some sort of a takeaway. In fact, what you will see is that, uh, um, you know, the, uh, the unevenly distributed part, one of the uh, uh, variables across which it's uneven is how have different industries or representatives of different industries responded to the survey. We'll also see how have different designations responded. So if I'm a CMO versus a chief digital officer versus a CEO, how do my perceptions about MarTech and Commerce Tech differ? You'll see all of that. Uh, so this is the industry mix. And with that, I'll jump into select insights. So I have eight insights broadly covering the different sections of the report. And I'll run through these insights. And then, of course, uh, I'll, I'll invite questions uh, so that I'm, which I'm happy to answer. So the first one, uh, of course, is that uh, this is, uh, you know, from our uh, section called MarTech Landscape. And what we see in this section is that more respondents are spending a much larger part of their marketing budget on MarTech than ever before. And this indicates a strategic prioritization of MarTech. So what we'll see is that, uh, you know, the, the, the question had multiple options. So we looked at everybody who said that they are spending over 16% of their marketing budgets on MarTech. The number of people who said that this year is 65% plus as against 18% respondents in last year's, uh, uh, last year's report. So you see a phenomenal growth. And you'll see a further breakup, how many are saying 16 to 25. You can just see the jump and you can see how many are saying 25% plus. So there's a huge growth. In fact, we have something called the MarTech Quadrant. Uh, we see this year that the two top um, you know, uh, areas of the quadrant, which are heroes and explorers, so these are people who are already extensively using MarTech 
and who plan to increase their spends, they today constitute over 90 percent of all respondents. So, MarTech is certainly here um, and, and that's, that's a very, very important observation. Why, why, why does it still make sense to see this slide? Because the global average is 30 percent of spends on MarTech. So, while we've grown significantly, there is a huge headroom for growth, which should make all players uh, extremely happy. The next thing that we ask, this is from our objectives and challenges of using, uh, you know, marketing technology. The next thing we see is that, <clears throat> you know, we ask what drives your marketing strategy? Is it driven by technology? Is it driven by creativity or an equal mix of both? Now, what happens is that even last year, even this year, we saw a similar pattern that most people say equal mix of both, right? Equal mix of uh, marketing, uh, of creativity and technology. But the interesting thing, thing we saw this year is that the people who say that technology drives their marketing strategy, technology alone, has grown from 10 percent to 26 percent, right? And that's just a phenomenal growth. And what we believe is that one of the trends, and we see it in, in the report in depth, one of the trends that has happened over the course of last one year is this barrage of Gen AI based technologies that have come into the market. And that's perhaps one of the reasons why this has happened, right? So, very, very interesting observation. Now, this is an interesting one. I don't mean to cause any fights within your organization, but this is an uh, insight which shows that a lot of executives are not always on the same page when it comes to deciding about, uh, you know, marketing technology. So, what we see, for example, is that we ask a question always that, uh, do you prefer to use a uh, marketing technology product that is an individual product or that's part of an integrated stack? And what we see, for example, is a CEO or a CMO, it's roughly the same number, 72 percent say we prefer integrated stack. But when it comes to a CDO or CTO, 53 percent say, and so basically a large number of people are open to working with best in class technology, even if it's not part of an integrated stack. Interestingly, this correlates to another observation, which is not here, but it is in the detailed report, that the, one of the main challenges of choosing marketing technology is the act of choosing it is very difficult, probably because of this sort of a, um, you know, a gap within, uh, uh, within organizations. That's something that VML and Miram can, of course, help solve, but this is not a sales pitch. I keep reminding myself. Okay, so back to the report. So this is what, um, this is a very, very interesting observation we have. Another interesting observation. So, we asked in your, uh, you know, in your uh, MarTech team, what are the top skills that you, you, you want your team members to have? Now, interestingly, just like we saw with creativity and technology, what we see is the top two skills people want, indicating a, a you know, right brain, left brain sort of balance, is creativity and data and analytics. So, when someone's building a MarTech skill, these are the key, uh, the MarTech team, these are the key skills they look for uh, within their uh, team members. Now, coming to commerce tech landscape. Now, this is a new section for the report and we have some really, you know, uh, amazing insights here. This one, for example, says that 95 percent of respondents view commerce tech as a strategic growth driver for their organization. Now, this is across the broad set of respondents, 250 plus what this tells us is that, you know, commerce tech and commerce is not something today that is restricted to our, what we might traditionally think as industries which uh, are, are likely to do their business online. This has now become absolutely mass based, right? So, very, very interesting observation. Another observation from the commerce tech space, again, this is, uh, you know, like the uh, not evenly distributed sort of thing. When we split this up, we, uh, so, we asked uh, what's your preferred approach of, of online commerce, right? Is it um, uh, marketplaces? Is it direct to customer? Is it social commerce? What we see, for example, is the smaller the company, the smaller the, uh, you know, in terms of organization size, I think our smallest size was 101 to 500 people, they tend to prefer social commerce, the big bar in the middle, much more uh, than other formats, perhaps because entry barrier is lower. As you move to the larger uh, organizations, they have more resources, more bandwidth and so on. So, 5000 plus, you see that they are preferring all channels almost equally, right? So, that's an uh, interesting observation. O size of the organization dictating, uh, you know, what their preferred approach is, okay? 
Now, coming to the last couple of uh, insights before we actually inaugurate the report. Uh, this is uh, so interesting, right? This has been probably the mega trend in the last one year about Gen AI. Now, what, what we see is that, you know, the biggest uh, use of Gen AI that, uh, you know, these marketing decision makers have responded to is uh, efficiency of content marketing, right? That's, and we, our surmise is that because these, uh, you know, prompt based AI tools became so popular uh, as, as Gen AI, and one of the key uses of that was generating content, right? That's why this is very big. But what we see is that while, uh, you know, content efficiency is the big one, there are so many other, uh, you know, uses of Gen AI that we are also seeing. You know, for example, we see that pers delivering personalized experiences is a very big thing that people want Gen AI to use, right? Optimizing sales and business strategies. These are things that they are expecting um, Gen AI to use. Again, in the report, you'll see that if a person is a, a chief digital or chief technology transformation officer versus a CMO versus a CEO, their own perspectives about which technology is most useful also is different. So that's one thing on uh, Gen AI. And this is another very interesting one. One of the things we've been tracking is, uh, again, a mega trend over the last few years is how organizations talk about data unification within, um, you know, their, uh, within their organizations, how respondents talk about it. And what we've seen is that last year in 2023, when we asked respondents, uh, so there are multiple options to this question, but I'm focusing on one option. People who respond saying data is completely unified in our organization. Those people were 13% last year. This year, uh, they are 21%, right? So this is a mega trend that we've been seeing. And this also includes technologies like CDPs and so on and so forth that people are adopting in order to drive this trend. Right. So these are a few observations uh, that we have from the report. Um, you know, before we get uh, and uh, you know the report will now be available both online as well as for you to uh, you know pick up from outside. Before I move to the actual inauguration, I'm I'm happy to answer any questions and anything anybody wants to know about any of the insights or anything at all. I'm happy to answer. Of course, I am available through the day, so happy to have a discussion later as well. Super. So I think uh, you can scan this QR code and download the report and uh, pick it up as well. Uh, uh, should we proceed to the inauguration? Okay. So this is a little bit about us. We are a growth partner. We are a full service digital agency and uh, absolutely happy to be with you today. Should we invite everyone? Yeah.